and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 3, Lesson Number 2 on Ratios and Complex Fractions. Most of the work today is really going to be review of ratio work that we've seen in the past, including the last lesson where we did a lot of review in terms of ratios. Make sure if you're just not up to speed, or if you're not up to speed yet, on your basic ratio work, make sure you do that first. Because the whole point today is we're going to be dealing with ratios where the fractions involved are complex fractions. We saw complex fractions for the first time earlier this year, and as a little review, all a complex fraction is, is a fraction whose numerator or denominator, or sometimes, actually many times, both, are fractions themselves. So no fractions like two-fifths, but maybe a fraction where it'd be like one-half in the top and three-fourths in the bottom, right? So, you know, we're going to be looking at ratio work where the numerators and denominators are a bit uglier. All right, let's get right into it right now with the first exercise. Here we go. Ratios involving fractions, exercise number one. A recipe for pie topping calls for one quarter cup sugar and three quarters of a cup of flour. Letter A says, write the ratio of cups of sugar to cups of flour as a complex fraction. Then simplify this fraction. All right, great. Well, remember, whenever we're looking at a ratio, we always want to make sure we know what's the numerator, what's the denominator. Here it's the ratio of cups of sugar, that's numerator, to, that's the fraction bar, cups of flour. All right. Luckily, it's kind of written in the right order for us. So as we set this up, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to have one quarter cup of sugar divided by three quarters cup flour. All right. Now, all I want to do at this point is simplify this. Now, keep in mind, right, fractions are always about division, right? So I literally have, in this case, one quarter divided by three quarters. In order to simplify a complex fraction, what we then do is we use the fraction division algorithm, which says to keep the first fraction the same, right, change the division into multiplication, and multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. All right. Now, one of the great things about this particular case is that we've got some nice cross cancellation going on between the fours, and then we just end up with one third. Now, letter B. What is the ratio of cups of sugar to cups of flour in simplest form? Well, we essentially have it right there, but what we could now say is we could say that it's one cup sugar to three cups flour. That's one way to state it in its simplest form. You could also say one cup sugar to three cups flour. That would also be a fine way to do it. All right, either one of these would be a very nice way to express your answer. But now let's talk a little bit about this topic that we saw in the last lesson, unit rates. Let me just bring this up a little bit. Letter C asks us the following. How can we interpret letter B in terms of unit rates? State a rate for each of the following. Cups of sugar per one cup of flour and cups of flour per one cup of sugar. All right. Well, quite frankly, one of these two is exceptionally easy, and the, the other one is a little bit more complicated to think about. What I'd like you to do is pause the video now and think about both of these unit rates. All right. Well, the plain fact is our ratio is one cup sugar to three cups flour. That actually immediately tells us the answer to this one. Cups of flour per one cup of sugar? Well, there's three cups of flour per one cup of sugar. There it is, right? Whoops, that, that, that is just not even near the word cups. Three cups flour per one cup sugar. And get rid of that random dot. Now, the other one, though, could be a little bit more complicated, right? Because here we want cups of sugar per cup of flour. Now, keep in mind that our, our ratio, right, right up here, 
uh, maybe, ah, I can't move it now. We'll just rewrite it. One cup sugar to three cups flour. If I really want this as one cup of flour, right? Because I want cups of sugar per one cup of flour, then I need to divide both the denominator and the numerator by three, right? Divide this by three, divide this by three. But when I divide that numerator by three, that is literally one third cup of sugar per cup of flour. Right? And it should make a lot of sense, right? I mean, literally, if I thought about three cups of flour per one cup of sugar, if I divided this by three and that by three, then every cup of flour, right, is going to have one third of a cup of sugar. One third cup sugar per cup of flour. All right, let's keep working with ratios that involve complex fractions. All right, here we go. Exercise number two. A bucket is filling with maple tree sap at a rate of three-fifths of a bucket in one quarter hour. Determine the rate of bucket filling per hour. Express your answer as a mixed number. All right, so here it is, right? We've got, you know, um, a rate that we're looking for. In fact, a unit rate, right? Bucket filling per hour. I know it doesn't say per one hour, but it never will typically when it's a unit rate. It'll be per hour, per mile, per foot, right? And they won't typically put in the one there. So let's think about this a little bit, right? I want the rate of bucket filling per, per hour. So that means the buckets should be in the numerator and the hours should be in the denominator. So let's set up the ratio together and then see if you can figure out the right answer, right? What we know is that we've got three-fifths of a bucket that's filled in per one-quarter hour. So that's our fundamental ratio, right? That's where it starts. And of course, it's a complex fraction because we have a fraction divided by a fraction. So now what I'd like you to do is try to pause the video, simplify this complex fraction, and then try to state that unit rate in terms of a mixed number and make sure to use proper units. Pause the video now. All right, well, let's do it. First, let's not worry about units or anything like that. Let's just simplify. Keep in mind, this is 3 fifths divided by 1 fourth. So if we use the fraction division algorithm, we keep that first fraction the same. We change the division into a multiplication, and we multiply by the reciprocal. Now, there's no cross-canceling that happens here, so we're just going to multiply the numerators, and we're going to multiply the denominators. And it asks us to figure out our answer in terms of a mixed number. 5 goes into 12 two times with a remainder of 2. So that's going to be 2 and 2 fifths. Now let's throw on proper units. The unit of a rate should always be very, very simple. So get used to this if you haven't already. The units of a rate are always this unit. And in this case, I'm going to make it plural because I have more than one. The fraction bar is always per, and then this unit. Right? And the beautiful thing about the units is that they inform us something, right? All by itself, two and two fifths is meaningless. But once I say two and two fifths buckets per hour, now I know that for every hour these buckets are filling, two and two-fifths of a bucket will fill up, right? And then if I say, well, all right, we're going to be filling buckets for eight hours, then I could use this answer to come up with some other thing, like how many buckets got filled up with tree sap. All right, let's keep going. Units are so very important. Exercise number three. Joe's Pizzeria sells three and three-eighths pizzas in one and one-quarter hours. Letter A, find the rate that pizzas are being sold per hour. First, convert the mixed numbers to fractions, then set up the ratio as a complex fraction. All right, we should all feel very, very comfortable with how to convert, right, mixed numbers into improper fractions, because that's what we really have got to have, right? Um, then we can set up that ratio, 
simplify it, etc. I'd like to, you to pause the video right now and see how far you can get through letter A. All right, well first, let's kind of do two things at once. I wanna set up the ratio, but also do the conversion, right? We're looking for pizzas per hour, so pizzas should be in the numerator, per fraction bar, hour denominator. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to actually convert that into a mixed number. Since I have, or sorry, an improper fraction, it is a mixed number right now. Since I have three and three eighths, right? Three is gonna be 24 eighths, plus a number th no, another three is gonna be 27 eighths. I can barely talk here. So we've got 27 eighths eighths pizzas, get that pointer out of there, for every, now let me convert one and one quarter, that's going to be five quarters hours, right? So that's my first ratio. I've got 27 and an eighth pizzas per five and a quarter hours. Now, I'd like to simplify that complex fraction. So forget about the units for a little bit, right? Now, let's take 27 eighths, change the division into multiplication, and multiply by the reciprocal. There isn't a lot I can do here, but I could cross cancel the four and the eight. All right, 27 times one is 27, and 10, right? There is no sort of um, simplification I can do with this in terms of like reducing the fraction at all. Um, and this isn't the greatest way to leave an answer. So let's do this. Let's write it back um, kind of in its mixed number form and also think about the decimal we might have. If we wrote it as a mixed number, of course, 10 would go into 27 two times, right? And then we would be left with a remainder of seven, so it'd be two and seven tenths. Now, if you prefer decimals to fractions, that's great because I can change two and seven tenths into a decimal very easily given that tenths are the basis of the decimal system. So I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go decimal. I like decimals in this case. 2.7. Now, 2.7 what? Units. Pizzas per hour. Pizzas per hour. Right? And that gives us a very good sense of what's going on, right? For every hour, right, uh, they're selling 2.7 pizzas. Let's take a look at letter B. At the rate in A, how many pizzas would they sell in five hours? Show the work that leads to your answer. All right, this should be pretty easy. Why don't you go ahead, pause the video now, and figure out how many pizzas they're going to sell in five hours. Again, this is the very definition of multiplication, right? We know every hour that goes by, they're going to sell 2.7 pizzas, all right? That means we should just take 2.7, multiply it by 5, and that should tell us how many pizzas. Now, again, I really want to kind of emphasize how great it is to think about the units here. You know, if I had 2.7 pizzas per one hour times five hours, right? then these units would cancel and I would just get pizzas. Now, and actually, in order to do that multiplication, I've either got to have a calculator handy or since I'm going to get a little bit of a workout on my, um, my decimal multiplication today, I'm going to find that 13.5 pizzas are sold in five hours. Now, if you're like, well, you can't sell a half a pizza, then you've never been into a sliced pizza place because you can totally sell a half a pizza. All right, so that's it, right? The idea is we're setting up ratios and we're creating unit rates based on those ratios like we did in the last lesson. The big difference here is that the numerator and denominator could be fractions and that makes them complex fractions. So let's take a look at one last exercise. A 3D printer is creating geometric models. A single printer can print two-thirds of a model in two and a half hours. What is the ratio of hours to models in simplest form expressed as a mixed number? All right, why don't you go ahead, pause the video now, and see what you can find here. Now, by the way, in almost every ratio so far that we've worked with that has had time in it, Time has almost always been in the denominator, right? Speed is a great example. Feet 
per second or miles per hour, right? Or right, the maple sap buckets per hour or the last problem, pizzas per hour. But notice in this problem it says, what is the ratio of hours to models? Hours this time should be in the numerator. So we've got two and a half hours, which is in mixed, I'm sorry, in proper fraction form, five halves of an hour. So five halves hours, right? So again, hours, two models, and then two thirds of a model. Now let's do this in simplest form. We're gonna do five halves times three halves, okay? And that's going to give us 15 halves. And if I express as a mixed number, that's gonna give me seven and one half. All right, now specifically, right, what are my units? Units are key here in order to be able to interpret in letter B what's going on. So my units are hours per model. All right, and now letter B should be a piece of cake. Letter B. Give an interpretation of the answer you found in A. What does it tell you about the model printing process? Awesome, pause the video now and see if you can give an answer to letter B. Well, the whole point of the unit rate, the whole point of it, right, is to tell you how long, in this case, it will take for one thing, right? So what does our answer tell us? It tells us, it will take seven and one half hours to print one model. That's it, right? And again, that's the wonderful thing about unit rates is that they tell us how long or how much or how far per one of something. In this case, one model takes seven and a half hours. Awesome. Let's wrap this up. All right, today we really did nothing new in terms of ratios and rates, right? We set up ratios, we used information in a problem to realize which way we should set up the ratio fraction, right? We did division in order to find unit rates just as we've done. The only difference really about the lesson today is it was a little bit messier, given that the numerator and denominator were, were fractions, right? Whenever you have a fraction within a fraction, it's known as a complex fraction. And you'll see those at various points in your mathematics, including as high up as Algebra 2 when you're a 10th or an 11th grader. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.